at 6, a plane crashes in Ethiopia, killing everyone on board, including eight Americans. It's the second crash involving the new Boeing 737 MAX 8. Now the company is facing scrutiny from airlines around the world. A jaguar attacks a woman at an Arizona zoo as she tries to get a selfie. Nobody wanted to pull her away when she was still clasped by the claws. This morning, the zoo is standing by its decision not to euthanize the big cat. Oh, wow. Plus, multiple tornadoes hit the south as the region works to recover from waves of severe weather. And if you're having trouble getting your little ones to bed, you're not alone. We'll tell you why you shouldn't worry about your baby sleeping through the night in our new positive parenting series. Your KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. And you're 10 years in, Drew. <laughs> you're, they're still yeah, not sleeping. I remember those days too, though. All right, hey, here's a look at downtown Woodland. As the sign would suggest, Woodland, Washington, uh, one of our focal points on this Monday morning. That's where photographer mm -hmm. Eric Patterson is. And now, yes, things are coming to life there. We say good morning to all of our viewers there across south, Southwest Washington. Good morning to our Oregon viewers as we're, well. We're gonna, yes, good morning. We're gonna try to get you through a Monday. We're all yeah. struggling just a little bit today. I mean, a lot today. Who help us, Rod? I'm doing fine. Uh, Are it, you? Is it my turn? Move it. Move it, Rod. Move it. All right, good morning, everybody. It's cold. It's frosty. We will wake up the sun, which, of course, the sun now doesn't come up until, uh, I think it's 731 this morning. Cold start out the door. Big coat for the kiddos at the bus stop. 47 sunshine at lunchtime. Clouds coming in later today, but staying dry through the school day and about 54 degrees. These clouds mean rain for tonight. Here's Chris McGinnis. Rod, check this out. For Monday morning commute, at this hour, we usually start seeing things getting busier at the Interstate Bridge, but so far so good out of Clark County. We're rolling along just fine on that side of town. Quick check over on the east side. Banfield out uh, near the Lloyd District. We're rolling along there just fine as well. Guys, no freeway trouble just yet. All right, Chris, thank you. We want to start with breaking news in Northeast Portland. Police are investigating an overnight shooting at Northeast 15th and Prescott. Our photographer who got this video counted at least 13 casings on the street. Mm. We don't know yet if anybody was hurt or if police have anyone in custody. We're also tracking this scene this morning in Southeast Portland. An officer there found a suspicious device inside a car and called the bomb team in to handle the situation. Portland police say an officer stopped a car on 122nd and Powell and arrested a wanted person who was inside the car. When they searched the car, they also found the suspicious device. We've reached out to Portland police for more details on both of these incidents. It is 602. A music teacher and son of a well-known Sherwood City Councilman is accused now of sexually abusing one of his students. Sherwood police worry there could be more victims in the case. Officers say 29-year-old Christopher Griffin sexually abused the student while teaching piano lessons at the music school where he worked. It's called Let's Make Music and Dance. Police arrested Griffin and say he had several encounters with the victim. Investigators think the abuse had been going on for a long time. Now, Griffin's mom, who is the director of the music school, insists he's innocent. She posted a statement about her son's arrest on the school's website. It reads in part, while we feel terrible for anything that happened to this child, Christopher is innocent and he will be exonerated in court. Now, by the way, we don't know yet how old the victim is. Police ask anyone with information or any other victims in the case to come forward. Wow. I had a deadly shootout between deputies and a suspect in Douglas County was all caught Jeez. on camera. Deputies say this all started when they saw a possible stolen car filled with weapons and ammunition at a Love's travel stop. So they ended up chasing the car, wound up going up a rural road that led to that ranch you see there. Deputies say the driver started firing first. That's when they fired back. The car eventually burst into flames and deputies say they found a body inside. So the woman who shot this video says she had no idea how intense this was going to get when she started recording the confrontation on her cell phone. Total shock. I, the, with the adrenaline, I wasn't as worried until afterwards when the cops had contacted me and thought, oh, geez, you know, this is really bad. Investigators are still working to identify the driver. No deputies were hurt in the shooting. 6.04 is the time now. One of the big headlines around the world this morning is the Ethiopian Airlines plane that crashed in Ethiopia. The plane came down Sunday shortly after takeoff. It was heading from Ethiopia to Kenya, and investigators believe all 157 people on board died. 
Among those passengers were eight Americans. This morning, Ethiopian media reports that the black box has been found partially damaged. Now, the plane was a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8. That's the same model of plane involved in another recent crash. NBC's Keir Simmons has details. A devastating scene. The aircraft ripped apart. Pieces of the plane on a crash site the size of a football field. The point of impact, a huge crater. Bodies and belongings strewn across the Ethiopian countryside. Among them, a lone shoe and napkins from the airline. It's grief-stricken families are mourning loved ones. Of the 149 passengers and eight crew members, eight were Americans. Radars showed flight ET-302 lost contact just six minutes after takeoff at 8.44 a.m. local time, crashing about 30 miles from the airport. The cause still unclear, though data from Flight Radar 24 showed the vertical speed, whether the plane was climbing or descending, was unstable after takeoff. Japan Airlines is uh, uh, one of the safest airlines in the world. Uh, uh, at this stage, we cannot rule out uh, anything. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 is the same model involved in the Indonesian Lion Air jet crash in October which also went down shortly after takeoff from Jakarta, killing 189 people. Boeing said it was sending a technical team to work with Ethiopian and US transport authorities. In Nairobi, this passenger was lucky to be alive after missing the doomed flight. Because of the delay from Dubai, so I missed the first flight. So when I reached here, and when I reached Addis Ababa, they told me to take the second flight. Relatives from around the world wait for news, including one father said to have lost his wife and two children. Keir Simmons, NBC News, London. So this latest crash is sparking concern that there could be a problem with these Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes. Both China and Indonesia are grounding these planes and some airline carriers have done the same, but those in the airline community say it's still too early to jump to conclusions. Tim Gordon is tracking this part of the story for us and he'll have more in our 6.30 half hour. Well, it's time for your morning rush. Christine Pitawanich is in the newsroom tracking the headlines around the world. Good morning, Ashley. Yes, there's some big stories we're covering this morning and we begin with President Trump versus Congress all over again. He's submitting his budget request for next year, asking for $8.6 billion to build a border wall. That's six times what Congress was willing to approve to end the government shutdown down that you may remember lasted for 36 days. The president's proposed budget would give a huge boost to defense, while education, health care, the environment, and more would see a 5% cut. Top Democrats are already saying no. And this next story might make you shake your head a little. A woman is recovering this morning after a jaguar attacked her. But here's the thing. She crossed a barrier at an Arizona zoo to take a selfie with it. The animal grabbed a hold of her arm when she got a little too close. Don't worry, though. She's going to be OK. She's apologized and said the whole incident is her fault. The zoo says the jaguar will not be euthanized. Today, Washington governor and presidential hopeful Jay Inslee will get a first-hand look at the destruction left behind by last year's Woolsey fire. He'll also talk with the people who live in that area. That fire burned more than 96,000 acres of land in Los Angeles and Ventura counties in California. Three people died. That was your morning rush. Back to you in the studio. Christine, thank you. It is eight after the hour. Tornadoes tore through the south again this weekend, flattening homes and injuring several people. This is just some of the damage in Louisiana and Arkansas. Now this comes as people in Alabama are still reeling from deadly tornadoes just last week that killed 23 people. 150 pets from some of those tornado damaged areas in Alabama are now in the Pacific Northwest to find new homes. These pets arrived on a flight that landed in Hillsboro yesterday afternoon, and now they're being transported to different shelters around Oregon and Washington. The Oregon Humane Society is taking in 30 of these cats and 18 of these dogs. Those animals will be available for adoption later this week.